Good morning, I'm Sarah Roth, President and CEO of the BC Cancer Foundation. I join you this morning with inspiring news from the traditional and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Slaytooth Nations. Today is World Cancer Day, and I want to take a moment to acknowledge the astronomical impact cancer has on people across the globe. This year, more than 19 million people will grapple with cancer, and 10 million will die. Far too many of those cancer deaths are from lung cancer. It's been in the shadows for too long. It's been underfunded and, in fact, stigmatized. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death in British Columbia, across our nation, and around the world. It's time for us to change this story, to give patients with lung cancer hope, to give them a longer, healthier life. To accomplish this takes brave, philanthropic leadership. It is my incredible pleasure to share with you that the Leon Judah Blackmore Foundation has donated $15.3 million to the BC Cancer Foundation, specifically aimed to advance lung cancer research and find new treatment solutions. This is the largest known philanthropic investment made to lung cancer anywhere in the world. And we are confident that our leaders at BC Cancer can break down this disease. As I welcome Nicola Brailsford, CEO and trustee of the Leon Judah Blackmore Foundation to the podium, I offer our sincere gratitude to you and to Leon on behalf of all the families who will have renewed hope thanks to this transformational donation. Thank you, Sarah. Today is a very significant moment for all of us at the Leon Judah Blackmore Foundation. I'm here today on behalf of our dedicated team of Sybil Y, Bonnie Tsi, and Marlena Minor. And together we represent the late Leon Judah Blackmore. Leon's life exemplified the great Canadian immigrant success story. He arrived in Canada as a young boy with his mother and six siblings all escaping the Holocaust in Poland. He grew up with very little in terms of material things, but so much value placed in community and giving back in whatever way he could. Leon became a very successful businessman here in Vancouver, and as his success grew, so did his generous spirit and his deep desire to find meaning in life through philanthropy and community impact. Leon came to know Dr. Stephen Lamb and BC Cancer by participating in a very early pilot study for early detection of lung cancer. He admired Dr. Lamb, and he knew that his work would have a profound impact on thousands of people's lives. And today, as we make this $15.3 million donation in his name, I know he would be so proud, and I know he would be filled with confidence in this team at BC Cancer. And to all of the families in British Columbia, Canada, and around the world who know the devastation of lung cancer. This donation is our way to help write a different ending for all patients to come. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Stephen Lamb, our inspiring leader in lung cancer research and care in British Columbia. Thank you, Nicola. Good morning, I'm Dr. Stephen Lam. I'm a clinician scientist at BC Cancer. For the past few decades, I've been actively caring for lung cancer patients and researching new technologies to detect lung cancer early so that we can treat them better. In the past decade, our teams have been a part of dramatic acceleration of discoveries such as new detection methods, artificial intelligence, genomic targets to attack cancer cells, immunotherapy drugs, and precision radiation therapy. However, patients with advanced lung cancer on targeted therapy or immunotherapy often develop resistance after a while. At BC Cancer, our scientists have developed ways to overcome resistance 
they've also designed new ways to destroy cancer cells. As an example, instead of inhibiting growth of cancer cells, they can make the cancer cells hyperactive to self-destroy or deprive them of essential nutrients. Our challenge is to how to bring these new treatments to our patients faster. Over the years, we have had loyal support from donors, but never before have we seen this monumental level of investment to accelerate our research. At BC Cancer, we have been pioneers in developing a lung cancer screening program that can benefit the whole population. This is a very important step. This is the program that Leon was involved with in his early days. He was considered high risk for lung cancer, although fortunately he never developed the disease. Screening will dramatically change the outcomes of those who have smoked heavily in the past or are currently still smoking. But we need to expand screening to benefit those who have never smoked but are high risk. The donation from the Leon Judah Blackmore Foundation will enable us to recruit additional talents to join the team and leverage new technologies to develop early detection methods for people who do not meet current screening criteria through our research in air pollution, breath research, and microbiome research. We will develop new therapeutics to cure lung cancers and stop tumor resistance to drugs. I can say with confidence that this donation will change the story for lung cancer. BC will lead the way. I would like to pay tribute to the late Leon. He's such an inspiring friend for many years, an incredible advocate for innovation in lung cancer. My special thanks to Nicola and the Leon Judah Blackmore Foundation for your amazing gift. I would like now to introduce Alan Soon. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alan Soon. It is my privilege to be here with you, especially on World Cancer Day, to celebrate this amazingly generous gift announcement from the Leon Judah Blackmore Foundation. Thank you to the BC Cancer Foundation for this opportunity to share my patient's story with you. Prior to my 2019 diagnosis, we were a busy Burnaby household with my wife and I balancing demanding professional careers all the while raising two kids, ages 12 and 15. Despite the hectic pace, life was good and we were blessed with good health and great support from family and friends. Next week, will mark the second year cancerversary of my diagnosis. I still remember with both shock and vivid clarity the moment I was told I had lung cancer. What started out as a persistent cough thought initially to be pneumonia quickly spiraled to a stage four lung cancer diagnosis. How can this be? I thought to myself, hoping this was an error in diagnosis. I was only 46 years old, never smoked, was in good health, and never had any of the other risk factors. Nevertheless, the diagnosis was confirmed a couple of weeks later when I first met with, my, with Dr. Janessa Laskin, my medical oncologist here at BC Cancer. My first treatment plan was a daily pill designed to target a specific mutation found in the cancer. Unfortunately, this pill didn't work well for me as a subsequent scan showed the cancer was progressing. Consequently, I changed to six rounds of IV chemotherapy, which transitioned to a maintenance chemo program every three weeks that I have since remained on. I actually just had my 21st treatment this past Monday. I'm very grateful my treatments continue to keep me stable and feeling well. It's been a rocky road, as you can imagine, though. Since my diagnosis, I've been hospitalized twice for adverse reactions and complications. I've also needed to have a catheter tube inserted in my side for three months to drain fluid that was accumulating in my lung lining. My appreciation to Dr. Lam and Dr. Baudouin for helping me with that procedure and its subsequent removal. I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to also thank and recognize the dedicated professionals at BC Cancer that have supported me and my family throughout this journey. My gratitude begins with the expert care of Dr. Laskin and her team. 
Thank you for your patience in answering all of my questions and concerns. I also want to acknowledge the outstanding care of the chemotherapy nurses on the sixth floor, many of whom I now know by first name. Dealing with cancer is not easy, but this past year with the pandemic has been especially challenging as we all have had to adjust our lives. Our faith has kept us calm throughout these unprecedented times, and our family is especially grateful for God's grace, mercy, and blessings. Lung cancer does not typically attract the necessary empathy and consequently funding because of the stigma that it's only a smoker's disease. I can assure you that it is not, and Dr. Laskin will tell you that all you need are lungs to get it. More people will die from lung cancer than from breast, colorectal, and prostate cancer combined. The five-year survival rate for lung cancer is less than 20%. Early detection through innovative screening programs is key, which is why today's announcement is such a game changer. Detecting lung cancer at stage one or two instead of three or four will give many patients the real possibility of long-term survival and perhaps even cure them. I'm here today to help all patients regardless of smoking history, to shed the stigma of lung cancer. I'm also here to show you the real face of this devastating disease. Many of us share the same dreams. To grow old with our partners, to see our children develop into responsible young people, and to spend quality time with our loved ones. In closing, I want to express my sincerest appreciation and gratitude to Nicola and the Leon Judah Blackmore Foundation. Your incredible contribution here today will give many patients, including myself, the gift of hope. Thank you, stay safe, and God bless. Thank you, Alan, for sharing your story and for fiercely advocating on behalf of all lung cancer patients. I want to thank you all for tuning in this morning and an enormous thank you once again to Nicola and the Leon Judah Blackmore Foundation for your partnership with the BC Cancer Foundation. I'd like to leave you all with these words from pulmonologist Michael Stevens' new book about lung disease. He writes, lung health is ignored, underfunded, and forgotten. Our very breath ties us to one another. Thank you.